Good afternoon. I always say good morning, but it legitimately is 4.32 in the afternoon. It is week three of my PhD and morale is good. It's good. Readings are plentiful. TAing is now something that I do for work. And I'm joining a fellowship in literally half an hour for our first meeting. But I will explain all of that later in this video. But for now, welcome to a day in my life and welcome back to the Doctoral Diaries. here which is my fall drink of choice definitely but I'm sitting outside of the Tamerti Faculty of Medicine and I will literally never attend here because that is just not up my sleeve there's a lot of things that are up my sleeve but that's not one of them but it's a beautiful building and it happens to be right across from the building that I will be having a meeting in in about nine minutes or so shit I need to go this morning I led three tutorials from 10 o'clock in the morning to about one o'clock in the afternoon as a PhD student, one of your responsibilities among many are to help TA or lead tutorials for undergraduate courses. What these hour-long sessions are for is to kind of go over the readings, get questions from students, help them with their assignments, and it's just like a workshop. Yesterday was actually my first tutorial, but I didn't film it because I wanted it to be, like I wanted to be fully present for it, but I did end up getting some footage from behind the scenes for today's tutorial, so I'll put that here. The kind of game plan for today is a little bit of introducing myself, introducing all of you. Full name is actually Victoria, but I've been going by Vic since I was like seven. I usually teach ethics and law, um, but now I'm teaching politics, which is cool too. Also started at U of T basically a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I'm a PhD student in the political science department and I'm specializing in international relations, but also environmental studies. I'm now on my way to my second tutorial of the day. The first one went amazing, great students. I just love that they care, which is really all that a TA could want. Um, but yeah, running late because people ask me a lot of questions, which I never want to discourage, but it's so hard to like run around. But yeah, I'll see ya. Kind of unconventional in the way that I teach. I just think that I perceive the world a lot differently than some of my colleagues might. Um, and I, for a long time, I used to beat myself up about that. Um, but as soon as I started teaching, I realized that that made it a lot more easier to connect with people and also like retain information. Um, but how I kind of see it is like two movies. Um, so this is the like first movie and then that's the sequel basically for this class. Is what Thucydides said in the history of the Peloponnesian War still relevant to today? Is it possible that Thucydides predicted things that he had no conception of actually happening in the future. Um, it's all kind of very interesting and, and proving whether theory is really timeless in that sense. Would be authority, that's a great one. Complex. Does anybody want to share out loud the word that they chose and why they did so? Yes, go ahead. Honestly, TAing is not at all scary. I was more scared to TA than I was to teach a course last year, which makes no sense. And looking at that logic now i'm like of course i loved teaching because that's what i love to do and it was just the same thing but probably a little bit less responsibility and pressure which is even nicer in total i have about 100 students in all of my tutorials like collectively so it's a lot to kind of get a handle on and getting to know people's personalities what they're interested in what they're studying what year they're in i think the hardest part would be finding the freaking classrooms I don't know why they're all over the place and I have like zero minutes to get in between each of them, but 
nonetheless, it was a really positive first experience and I'm super thankful for it. So then after tutorials, I actually ended up going to the fishbowl. <laughs> it's called the fishbowl because you can see into it and when you look inside, everybody just literally looks like a fish. I don't know. I don't know if that's the actual scientific reason why that it's, it is named that way, but I genuinely think that's why it should be called that. <laughs> hours would have never sat there for that long but because I genuinely have so much to do like I had no choice I actually had to sit there and work consecutively for that long so I reviewed one of the presentations that my partner Ella and I are going to be doing for our class on Friday I also completed a module that was required for this fellowship and then what else did I do I did some of the readings as well because there's a lot of preparation for today's meeting that I'm going into literally right now. So my home faculty is actually uh, the Department of Political Science. Um, so yeah, that sounds like very <laughs> different from what all of you, but I think that's really cool. Um, and I'm happy to be here. My previous research focused on ecological constitutionalism and that's fancy jargon for um, basically inputting environmental rights into our constitution and so that they're constitutionally bound. Um, something that I'm really interested in getting into is kind of the ethics of, like what kind of ethical obligations do we have to ourselves, in uh, to the earth, um, and then of course my PhD research who I'm working with. There you go, got that for you Fiona, no problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> Basically, I'm looking at uh, climate-induced visas. So the email, I literally cried because I was like, this is so cool. And sometimes I feel like I'm in class and like nobody cares about the environment. And I'm like, are you okay? Um, so I'm happy to be in a room with people who also love the planet. <laughs> yeah. Sort of sectors, education, for example, and they're just not this resource intensive. One of the things about this picture is some of the smallest things are some of the most impactful. So many PhD committee. Yeah. yeah. She scares me sometimes. Cost analysis and like how to get a like the amount of like everything. Hello, I'm back in the fish bowl. I keep looking outside the door to make sure nobody's coming in. But it's been a few days since I filmed the last clip and I wanted to kind of talk about how my first fellowship meeting went, what that was like, my first impressions and all of that jazz. But before I do that, I realized that when I dropped fellowship in this video, like as a word, I didn't really associate it with any explanation. And to be honest, not everybody knows what a fellowship is. I only know a little bit about it and I'm still learning. Um, and there's a lot of like misconceptions about what it might mean, especially on the doctoral level. For a fellowship in general, I'm gonna look it up right here. Um, they are funded short-term opportunities that can last from a few weeks to a few years. They can be focused on personal, professional, and academic development. Fellowships are sponsored by a specific association, organization, institution, or government, which sets the eligibility requirements. So basically what this is, is a research cohort that is going to look at hopefully filling a gap in some research out there, or maybe even contribute to the conversation on a specific topic. And they will either do that independently, but in conversation with one another, or create like a cohort specific deliverable in some way. And all of that is just fancy to say that these are people who are passionate about a specific topic and are going to work together to create solutions, ideas, tangible things to address real world problems. So the fellowship that I decided to join and obviously I had to apply and I got accepted is the Climate Health and Sustainable Care Student Training Program. And in the sense we are research fellows and we do get paid. So the Collaborative Center for Climate Health and Sustainable Care is looking to kind of build its repertoire, its reputation. And so this fellowship is kind of lending a hand in that. We're helping the Collaborative Center, but also they're giving us the resources to do any research that we find interesting on climate change, climate health related problems, sustainable healthcare systems, and all that good stuff. The reason why I decided to join this 
fellowship is because I'm going to be studying things that I will not be exposed to in my political science studies and it's directly related to the research I want to do in my PhD candidacy. For my dissertation it is really pivotal that I learn about these things and not only do I just need to learn about them but I'm really freaking interested and I want to know. So yeah, the fellowship was, the first meeting was just fantastic. It is so cool to see people loving the environment and coming at this care for the environment from so many different disciplines. I got to hear from students who are doing PhDs in biochemical engineering or PhDs in nursing, master's students who are also studying very similar things. I am the only political science student in this fellowship, which to me is a huge win because I feel like I'll be a resource for other people and they'll constantly push me to kind of test my own knowledge, but also I can learn completely different ideas from all these disciplines and then hopefully bring them back into the political science department. What I love about this fellowship is that it's like about sustainability and we're researching things related to sustainability, but we're also practicing it. So we had a fully vegetarian meal and we were also asked to bring our own cutlery, our own plates, everything reusable to minimize as much waste as possible. So to kind of see that congruency between like what we're learning and studying versus like how we actually practice every single day life was so special. Anyways, that's the end of today's video. I can't wait to bring you along for more of the fellowship, more of my PhD journey, and just in general, have you along for the doctoral diaries. Thank you so much for being here. Sending you lots of love and energy, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.